Welcome you all and thanks for joining me once again for Math and Science for Young Children. In each of our sessions, we will be reviewing math, science, and early childhood topics. For this session, our goals are to experience bubble explorations as an opportunity for playful learning in science and math, become familiar with principles of developmentally appropriate practices, and discuss the meaning of integrated curriculum. Make sure you download the note sheet to go along with this video and stick around as we learn all about math and science concepts for young children. What comes to mind when you think of Developmentally Appropriate Practice, or DAP? DAP is a, coin, is a term coined by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, or NACI, to provide a set of guidelines suggesting curriculum and content and practices serving children ages birth to eight. The teaching strategies associated with DAP are relevant to science and mathematics and are an integral aspect of this course. DAP builds on children's prior knowledge, makes learning concrete and experiential, scaffolds learning to support growth, accommodates different learning styles, provides child-initiated and teacher-planned experiences, integrates subject areas, values the importance of play, and makes home-school connections. Teaching in developmentally appropriate ways requires teachers to make decisions based on, number one, what is appropriate for a child's age or developmental stage. Knowing what is typical at each age and stage of early development is crucial. Child development domains, cognitive, physical, social, emotional, they all follow general sequential patterns. This knowledge is based on research. Teachers need to know and understand milestones and sequences of development in all domains and use child development information in planning and identifying activities, environments, experiences, and strategies to best promote growth and learning. Number two, teachers should make decisions based on what is individually appropriate for each child. Teachers should look and make sure that the items mentioned are appropriate for each child. Each child is an individual and develops his in his or her, excuse me, in his or her own unique ways. Teachers need to know each child's strengths, abilities, needs, challenges, interests, <coughs> temperaments, and learning styles. This can be done through time spent together, observation, assessment, work samples, documentation, and information from families and past teachers or programs. And thirdly, teachers need to do what is socially and culturally appropriate. Children are shaped by their lives at home and in their communities. Teachers need to know each child's cultural and family background, their unique family values, languages, and lifestyles. Teachers should ensure that the experiences they provide respect these and are meaningful for each child and their family. Teachers must make an effort to get to know the children's families and learn about their values, expectations, and factors that shape their lives at home and in their communities. This background information helps provide meaningful, relevant, and respectful learning experiences for each child and family. Early childhood professionals working with young children or teachers are decision makers, and they and make many decisions about the children and their programs on a daily basis. Understanding DAP, or Developmentally Appropriate Practices, its meaning and intentional practices is essential in guiding the decisions teachers make for young children. 
Objective two, let's talk about the um, bubble ex using bubble explorations as an opportunity for playful learning in both science and math. Our science focus for this episode is physical science or bubbles. A bubble is a thin skin or liquid surrounding a gas. This thin skin, or in the case of soap bubbles, the soap film, has elastic qualities and can stretch. The soap film is composed of molecules of soap and water. When talking about soap bubbles, the gas that the soap film surrounds is composed either of the gases that we exhale, which is carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, or other gases, or the gas that makes up the air in the classroom, as when a bubble is made by waving a wand in the air. Through the exemplar activity, children experiment to learn what kinds of bubbles can be made using everyday objects. They observe and describe the shapes, sizes, and behaviors of the bubbles. As children become successful bubble blowers, they predict, compare, ask questions, communicate, and learn about cause and effect. The underlying science concepts in this session are, number one, bubbles are filled with gases, and number two, bubbles are round, sphere-shaped, and no matter the shape of the bubble blower, they are always round and sphere shaped. However, when bubbles are touching each other or a surface, they do have a flat edge. This activity can be done outside on a day with good weather. The advantages of being outside are easier cleanup and more space for bubbles to fly high and move around in the wind. However, bubble exploration can be easily managed inside by locating the activity near a sink and in an area that is easy to clean. You can spread newspaper or a sheet beneath the exploration area to absorb any spills. For cleanup, a solution of half vinegar and half water is best for cleaning tables and floors. It cuts the soap scum and leaves tables sparkling clean. A squeegee is also useful for removing bubble solution from tabletops. In general, sponges just spread the soap solution around and make it harder to clean up the bubble solution. If you are concerned about using bubble solution with infants and toddlers, baby shampoo can be used instead of dish soap. However, the solution will not be as strong. Objective three discuss the meaning of integrated curriculum. One of the teaching strategies associated with developmentally appropriate practice is an integrated approach to curriculum. Remember, curriculum is defined as what you teach and how you teach it. Bubble explorations can be integrated throughout different developmental domains, including math. Size and shape are the big ideas in math that are embedded in bubble exploration. Size is an attribute that children can talk about. We can help children build their mathematical vocabulary by making comparisons and using words such as big, bigger, biggest, or small, smaller, smallest, and tiny. A sphere shape is defined as a three-dimensionally perfectly round object. Children can think of other sphere-shaped objects like oranges and beach balls. Effective curriculum plans integrated across traditional subject matter divisions help children make meaningful connections and provide opportunities for rich conceptual development. That's called integrated curriculum. So now let's review what we've learned. Developmentally appropriate practice is to provide a set of guidelines or suggesting curriculum content and practice serving ages birth to age eight. DAP builds on children's prior knowledge, makes learning concrete and experiential, scaffolds learning to support growth, accommodates different learning styles, 
provides child-initiated and teacher-planned experiences, integrates subject areas, values the importance of play, and makes a home-to-school connection. DAP requires teachers to make decisions based on what is, number one, appropriate for a child's age or developmental stage, number two, what is individually appropriate, and finally, number three, what is socially and culturally appropriate. Bubbles can be used to explore both science and math concepts. The underlying science concepts are, number one, bubbles are filled with gases, and two, bubbles are round, sphere-shaped. Size and shape are the big ideas in math that are embedded in bubble exploration. Effective curriculum plans frequently integrated across traditional subject matter divisions help children make meaningful connections and provide opportunities for rich conceptual development, and this is called integrated curriculum. That wraps us up for this week's episode. You can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your Blackboard course. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm here to help. Thanks again for joining me, Mrs. Murph, as we learn all about science and math for young children. Have a great time learning, and I'll see you next time.